For a ship to be in stable condition, her center of gravity must be below the metacenter. Before departure, the distance between G and M, known as metacentric height, GM, is calculated by the designated officer on board. It is stated on intact stability criteria that the ship must have an initial metacentric height of not less than 0.15 meter, corrected for free surfaces. But there are instances where the center of gravity rises, causing a decrease in the metacentric height, or even it rises above the metacenter, resulting in a negative metacentric height, which lead to the ship becoming unstable. In this video, let's discuss several reasons why a ship's center of gravity rises. One of these reasons is the free surface effect in partially filled tanks. Free surface effect refers to the tendency of liquids in partially filled tanks or compartments to shift when a vessel rolls or pitches, affecting its stability. If this is the ship's transverse section, let us assume that the ship is floating in still water at upright condition and this is the waterline. The double bottom tank is partially filled with water and let's say the center of gravity of the water inside the tank is here and we will mark it with a small letter G. If this is the ship center line, and this point is the ship center of gravity, marked with capital letter G, the geometrical center of underwater volume is the center of buoyancy. When a ship tilts or rolls, the ship center of buoyancy, capital B moves to some point at the low side to be 1. The liquid within a partially filled tank tends also to move to the lower side, causing a shift of the center of gravity of water inside the tank. As small g moves, the vessel's center of gravity, capital G also moves parallel to the movement of small g. Now the point where the buoyancy force and the ship centerline intersect is called the transverse metacenter, capital M. And the horizontal distance between the ship center of gravity, capital G, and the vertical line of buoyancy force is called the riding lever, GZ, which determines the ability of the ship to return to its upright position when she is tilted. This is supposed to be the riding lever if the water inside the tank does not move, or if the water is in solid form or frozen. But since the water inside the slack tank is free to move, due to its movement, the ship center of gravity, capital G moves in a parallel direction with the center of gravity of water inside the tank. Thus, the present riding lever of the ship at this moment is from G1 to Z1. If we extend the downward vertical force upward, intersecting the center line, the point of intersection will be GV, or the virtual rise of the ship center of gravity. The horizontal distance between GV to ZV is equal to G1 and Z1. The movement of the water inside the slack tank when the ship is healed results in a decrease in the ship's riding lever. This is supposed to be the ship's stability triangle if the water inside the tank cannot move or the tank is pressed up, which is bigger compared to the stability triangle when the water is free to move inside the tank. The result is a reduction in the ship's stability due to slack tank. Another reason why the ship's center of gravity rises is the raising of a weight using the ship's crane or derrick. Let's say the weight already on board will be lifted from the lower hold using the ship's lifting gear. Assuming that the weight center of gravity is here, marked with small letter G. The ship's center of gravity is here, along the center line and the ship's metacenter will be here. As soon as the weight is lifted, the weight center of gravity vertically moves to the derrick head, at G1. The ship's center of gravity will also move vertically upward, parallel to the movement of the weight center of gravity, at GV. I prefer to use GV, where V stands for vertical movement. There is only vertical movement in the ship's G, because the onboard weight is vertically lifted. If the derrick is swung on either side, a horizontal movement of the ship's center of gravity will be created, causing a ship to list on one side. Now the weight center of gravity will remain in the derrick head as long as the weight is suspended. It will remain in this position, whether the weight is lifted one centimeter above the tank top, or the weight will be here, 
or even near the derrick head. As the ship's center of gravity moves vertically upward, the vertical distance of the ship's G from the keel increases known as Kg, resulting in a decrease in the initial metacentric height or Gm. Let us observe the movement of the ship's center of gravity, assuming that this is the quay, and this is the weight to be loaded. The weight center of gravity will be here at small g. As soon as the weight is lifted, the weight center of gravity, small g, moves to g1, at the derrick head. The ship center of gravity will also move in the direction of the derrick head. Remember that when adding a weight on board, the ship's g will move towards the center of gravity of the weight being loaded. But in this case, since the weight center of gravity moves to the derrick's head, the ship's center of gravity will move toward this direction. Assuming that the new ship's center of gravity is here, at G1, where it is off the centerline, causing the ship to list. Another reason for the rise of ship's G is, shifting of weight from lower hold to main deck. Raising a weight from below to any point above ship's center of gravity, will cause a rise in the ship's center of gravity. Remember that when shifting a weight, the ship's center of gravity always moves parallel to the movement of the center of gravity of the weight being shifted. Next is the adding of weight above the ship's center of gravity. Loading of cargo at a point above the ship's G. Causing it to rise. It also includes pumping in ballast water in the wing tanks, as wing tanks are above ship's G. Always remember that when adding a weight, the ship's center of gravity will always move toward the center of gravity of the weight being loaded. Next, discharging of weight below the ship's center of gravity. Any weight discharged below the ship's G will cause a rise in the ship's center of gravity. Remember that when discharging a weight, the ship's center of gravity moves away from the center of gravity of the weight being discharged. If this is the weight center of gravity's initial position, once this weight is discharged, the ship's center of gravity moves away from the weight center of gravity. Let's assume that this is the final position of ship's G after discharging. The ship is slightly listing because the ship's G is off the center line. So from the initial position of the ship's center of gravity, which is here, due to the discharged weight below, it rises. Another example of discharged weight below the ship's center of gravity is, the pumping out of ballast water in the double bottom tank. This will cause a ship's center of gravity to rise. Three things to remember when shifting, adding, and discharging weight on board. When shifting a weight already on board, the ship's center of gravity always moves parallel to the movement of the center of gravity of the weight being shifted. When loading a weight, the ship's center of gravity will always move toward the center of gravity of the weight being loaded. And when discharging weight, the ship's center of gravity moves away from the center of gravity of the weight being discharged. Here are additional reasons why the ship's center of gravity rises. Bilging situation, causing free surface effects. Collapse of a longitudinal division or bulkhead in a partially filled tank. Timber deck cargo becoming saturated due to bad weather conditions. Icing up of superstructures and decks. Water landing on the deck from the sea in heavy weather conditions. Blockage of freeing ports or scuppers on the upper deck. Passengers crowding on superstructure decks at the time of departure or arrival. Water entering the ship through badly maintained hatches on upper deck and flooding the tween decks. Hatches or bow doors were inadvertently left open on the main deck. Vessel making first contact with keel blocks in a dry dock at the stern. Ship's first contact with a raised shelf or submerged wreck. That's all for now, I hope you found this video helpful, see you in my next video, thank you for watching, bye.